Today is Daf Shabbos. Parshas Baalaischa is Daf Chot Hey Omed Aleph. And um, tonight, today, today's year is in the schus of my father, who unfortunately is very unwell, and that is why I'm in New York right now. And um, he needs a big for Shalema. David, Rab David Nachman Ben Yechevet Shifra. So hopefully the schus of the learning tonight and all the tefillahs that everybody is davening on his behalf should be Mekuyim and Meluyay. Just to repeat a vort. My father is a medical Tamachachim, a great lateral thinker as well. And he has many original ideas. But one of his very good verter is that um, when a Chosen Kala get married, you say, uh, the Chosen says to the Kala, Harei Atme Kadeshus Li, the Tabazoi Kedas Moshe Yisro. So my father said that, that um, what we're really saying, I guess the subtext is as follows. The, the word at, you, has in it the aleph and the tuf, the very first and last letter of the aleph base. The word li, a lamed and a yud, lamed is the tallest letter in the aleph base, and yud is the, is the minutest letter in the aleph base. And what we're saying is as follows. How do two people come, up, uh, come together, two strangers who have no idea, never met each other before, and suddenly they become together and they become one. How does that happen? How do two people who want to be as remote as an aleph is to a tough? How can two people, one can be a giant and one can be a mini, like a lama de yud? How do they come together and stay together? They're molded together. They melt together. You know when? If it's based on Kedas Moshe Yisro, the very fountain head, the very bedrock of this relationship is Kedas Moshe Yisro, following Yiddish traditions, then it'll be rock solid. And they're going to, and, and the two can uh, melt together. And uh, well, my father, my mother, Baruch Hashem, for many, many years have raised many children, grandchildren, great grandchildren, have marshaled literally an army of Tzivas Hashem, Oni Ma'iskim Al and and children where our Shlich is doing the Rebbe's and Yonim. So, this of that, we should have a, a Refu Shleva take it from a Yad Mamish. <clears throat> Let's learn here that the last thing we learned in the Mishnah was there are four different kinds of gittin that are rendered puzzle. And basically, the idea is that slacking in Lishma. And the last idea that we brought up was the idea of Brera. And if he said, whichever wife comes out of the door first, that's, um, that's so he said that I have two wives, um, uh, you know, the same name. And I'll decide later which one I want to divorce. So therefore, at this, mo at this point, I don't have a decision yet. I want to make a decision later. And retrospectively, that should be the decision of now. That's called Brera, a Brera, and it's not a valid get. So the Gemara continues along this theme, and the Gemara says two dots, about 12 lines on top of the page. the following question. He said to the Seifer, Seif right, Le'eza should take to the Pesach Chiva. He writes here a little bit different than the case of our Mishnah, because now Mishnah, he says, I can decide right now, but I don't want to make a decision right now. I'll choose later. Here we're talking about that I am not, never going to make the decision. Whoever comes out first from that door, very similar to what Yitzhak said when he won the war, whoever comes in my door bringing a curtain, whichever wife comes out of the door first, that's the one that I'm going to divorce. Mao. What would it didn't be then? No, it's right now it's not sorted out. I want late to be sorted out retroactively. Amalei said, Rabbi Huda said to Rabbi Isha, isn't that our Mishnah? Tanei su, let our Mishnah. Yes, it became furthermore, Amalei Lavi said to a safe, safe, le edish, she edish, I got it, write me a get, and whichever one I'll decide later to divorce, I will use the get for that woman because they both have the same names. Possibly God, but you cannot use it. Alma, aim breda. It's clear for me, aim breda. I'm not even sure what your question is. Eisve, so then Rabbi Isha asked back to him again, it says, if somebody says to his children, Hareini, Sheikhet, Mabriya, Karm Pesach, you have to nominate all the people who are going to be involved in current pace at first, and they can withdraw all the time until you shecht. And only those who were nominated before you shechting are included. Afterwards, they can no longer include themselves in, in, in the current. It says here, if a person said to his sons, Hareini shaykhet as a Pesach, I will shech the current Pesach, and who will I have in mind? Whoever comes first, he will be nominated in this carbon. 
Kivan Shanich was Rishon. As soon as the first person comes in, not entirely, even just Rosh Shiva Rubai, the majority of his body, Zacher Bechel Koi. So then obviously he gets a Chelik in this carbon. Umezakes Echav Imoy. And then he includes all of his brothers with him. And it sounds like he came into the door after you shechted the animal already, and whoever came in afterwards uh, is zeicher in his portion. Well, why? Because we're going to apply the rule of Breda that all along when the father shechted, even though at that time we have no idea who was going to come first. But, but nevertheless, whoever comes the first later, retrospectively be the one that was zeicher. And at that time of shechita, he was the one that was meant to be. And he will be mezakeh. All of those other brothers that want that should be included in his chelik. That's again. So he, so he asked the question here to Rabbi Yehuda, what do you tell me from our mission by Gitna Ebreda? I bring an eye for Karm Pesach, that yes, Breda, on um, Malay. So then Rabbi Yehuda responds, hey, Shibri, hey, Shib, my son. Ma in Yipsach HaMetz to Gitna? What are you comparing Pesach to Gitna? Ha'itmar Allah, didn't we learn? Amr Rabbi Yehuda said, the whole story of Pesach was that definitely he already included them all in the Karm Pesach before he even the Otherwise, too late. I can help. But why did he say what he said? Only He wasn't being honest, truly, uh, truly honest with them. He just made it sound like the only way they'll be Zoyichi is they come at first. And he wanted to see, he wanted to, you know, get to, to have a little bit of enthusiasm and they should make it as soon as possible. <clears throat> Uh, they cannot prove it to you. The Tony it says, Kimush and Nichlish, the first person walked in, the Roy Shaver Ruba, majority of himself, Zacher Bechel Koy, Mazach Echem Ima, and also includes all his brothers with him. If you can tell me, Damini, me, Kara, if you tell me what they really they were already included from the outset. They have a shop, it makes sense. How can he be Mazaki his brothers? The father is Mazaki everybody anyway. If you can tell me that he was not. Nominate, he didn't nominate any of his children. His lacha shmitam mikem ismano. How in the world can they be included after he shechted already? Didn't we learn with nam lekli the mishnah? Nimne, you can be nominated. Umoishi, they but you can also step back. Nimenu from the carbon. Adchi chetu yishech. But once you shech, that's it. Whoever is included, included. Whoever is excluded, excluded. So we see clearly. So therefore, Rabbi Huda says over here, there's no braid of there. The whole thing was more a trick. The ruse to get them to come, a little bit of alacrity. And Tanya Mori actually lived in the Braisa there. There's a story, we have this in Yuma as well, that is a story that the girls actually were more enthusiastic than the boys. They came first. Venim to Bonis, this is a Bonish failure. It comes out the girls were excited and enthusiastic about doing their mitzvahs, and the boys were basically lazy. That's the discussion here in the Gemara. <clears throat> Now, there is a big machlekes of cellular based on this, this that you have to include every person's mahatayra or not mahatayra. Our Gemara here follows the opinion that says it is mahatayra, and therefore the only way to understand this mission is if you learn that they're already nominated from the outset. Says the Gemara he says, I don't understand the whole discussion. I don't understand if that be Hesha and Abi Huda are not talking the same, the same language. What do you mean not from the same language? Rabbi says, I believe that in Breda, there's a big distinction between toile bedas atzmai or toile bedas achedim, meaning as follows. If I say, for example, by get, I'll decide later which one I want to divorce. What happened? What am I saying really? At this point, I don't know. I could make a decision now, I just don't know. Later on, I'll think about it and I'll decide who. But they will say, Aim Brady, he could have decided before. And if you decide later, how in the world can you say this? That I, that's what I meant all along. No, when you had a chance to make a decision, I was indecisive. If I made a decision later, I made decisions then. So Aim Brady, it's not retrospective. But we have, for example, in the case where he has two wives, he doesn't know which one to divorce, and he says, whichever one comes out first. So he never made the decision. And at this juncture, he could have made the decision. And later, he didn't make the decision either. The decision was made by the fact that she walked out first. So then, maybe then we can say that since it wasn't that I was indecisive, I decided that I am going, I decided at this point that I am going to divorce whoever comes out of the house first. In that case, this, the, it makes sense maybe to say, yes, greater, that this is, the, this is what you decided. You just have whoever comes first. That's the one that came out first. But the decision was made already back then when the get was was written. So maybe then yes, greater. So, uh, so Rabbi is saying, Rabbi Heish is asking about a case where he, it's not a question of being indecisive. He said the wife would go first, tell you about that, and Rabbi Huda keeps on answering, tell you about Rabbi Heish asked him a question about a, about a carbon paste. Again, what's the carbon paste there? He says, whichever child will come in first, that's a tell you about that, he decided already that he's going to nominate 
What? Who? Right now, I decided I'm going to nominate the one that comes in first. So, maybe you say Ezbreda. So, they're not talking the same language. So, obviously, according to Rabbi Yehuda, it seems there's no difference between Taylor Das Achei and Taylor Das Aspre. If you say Ebreda, it's a universal rule, Ebreda. But Achei says Abaya, and it makes sense. There is a distinction between Taylor but Das Achei and Taylor Das Aspre. You know, Amish is talking about Taylor Das Aspre. He was indecisive when he could have made a decision, but he didn't. So, it doesn't make sense to say later on, reflects on today. But Taylor Das Achei does. So, Abaya says, to the Bayer, Omar of Ibrahim says, Kaboyi Mene. Now, Bhaj is asking to the Taylor with Das Achei, right? The Taylor is where it depends on whichever comes up first, whichever wife comes up first. If you compostulate, and Abu Yehud is answering him, Taylor with Das Achei. A case of my mission where he could have made the decision, Taylor with Das Achei. And then Bahaj the Moses and Taylor with Das Achei. And then Abu Yehud continues talking about Taylor with Das Achei, not talking the same language. Omar of says, Rather, Okay, you think they're not talking the same language. Rabbi Huda actually is talking, Rabbi Huda is trying to say in his way to Rabbi Asher that there is no difference between Taylor Bedas Akma and Taylor Bedas If you hold a blade, there's no res- retrospectivity. There's no retrospectivity. My question, what's your question about? Deal with the man, the Isle Bedas, the Lisha Taylor Bedas, the Shogah If you hold it, these are, these are rules. That are, that are universal rules. So either it applies everywhere, it applies nowhere. East Liberator, man, the less Liberator, less to the head, which does a head and less Liberator. The rubber says, no, either you believe in Brady, you don't believe Brady. There's no distinction between Taylor as a head or that's as And that's what I'm really saying to Rabbi Heishi. I'm going to bring you two proofs that there is a difference. I'm going to bring you Tanoim that holds. Taylor Bedas Achedim may be yes, Brady, but Taylor Bedas Achma ain't Brady. And there's a difference, as you can see, and Abai is right. And Abhaji's questions are valid. And totally unrelated to the case of our mission. Case number one. And we already had this in Adivin and other places as well. Well, Rabbi Yehuda, the Taylor, but that's Atman Lester Bread. I'm proof to you, Rabbi Yehuda, the Tana, holds a Taylor, but that's Atman. It's up to him. He holds a Bread. And yet, in the case where it's totally somebody else, he holds the Ash Bread. And we usually see that. But Taylor the Chaim is the bread. Taylor the Chaim holds bread. Would you see that? Taylor the Chaim is the time we learn. How the Kach Yayim may be not kosher if somebody buys wine from a guy. There was a time when we acid. There was a time when we acid wine, but we made a gzera that not only should be the bread of a guy, but even the wine from a kusi is forbidden when they were when the Samaritans came out against the base of and they caused each of these, all these hardships. Apart from the fact that it's questionable whether we're Gedi Emes or not Gedi Emes. <clears throat> Um, so this Mishnah must be talking about, it says Tasis, before they made that Gzeda of the wine, or others say that even when they made a Gzeda for the bread, they did not make a Gzeda of the wine. <clears throat> um, now, so what, what actually happened there? So Rashi here doesn't say, Rashi in other places says at the end of Shabbos, Mamish Ben Ashmash, you didn't have a choice, you have, you have nothing to eat in Shabbos, so we have to make certain allowances. Rashi here says, from the Shabbos, you, you had no. Vessels, you had no pots to put a place anything in, so therefore it's all sitting in these barrels, and you have nowhere else. You can't just remove some of the wine. You have no to put no jugs, nothing. So you buy wine from a kushi, buy an amaris. We say all amaras to give truma. Most of them give mice. By shaking by kushim, they didn't give truma, give mice. Even though we know that mitzvahs that they observe we already have the four and the six pages. they were maybe more careful than eating, but they were not particular about the laws they eat. It's one thing what they do for themselves, but what they sell to others, they don't really care whether the mitzvahs are done or not. So, what should you do? Shnei lugin, oime, you say the following. Shnei lugin, out of 100, I got to take 2% if I'm the average person at Benyani. Is shnei lugin, shani, osi, lahab, you two lug, lugin, that I am going to set aside after Shabbos or when I do get some utensils. Harei hen truma, which leaves now 98 lugin. Asara Maiserishi, 10% of Maiserishi. So Tasis wants to say in, here in other places that it doesn't mean 10, it means 9.8. But Tasis here has an opinion that maybe it is 10. Why is it 10? I look at you ready to get two away for Truma. Because since according to Allah, Chita Achas by Tedis is a Kedi, all you have to do is give one kernel. So even though you decide to be more generous and give two, but when it comes to Maiser, if it's all sitting in the barrel, you got to give 10% of the entire 100 minus one kernel. Rishin, when, uh, that's my solution. Now you have 90 left, or, or 90 left, or 88 point something, is Tisha Maizah Shani. Maizah Shani, you only give nine, or 10% of whatever's left. And then, what do you do with, um, sorry, um, I, I skipped. Truma is 10, Maizah is Tisha, and, uh, and then you do Maizah Shani as well. So you say, two Lugin is Truma, 10 is Maizah and nine is Maizah Shani, and he says here, Umeichu, 
with the Maisa Shani, he says you actually do something. Rashi says you just have to say a few words and you say that the money sitting there in that place is a transfer from the Kedusha of the Maisa Shani, and therefore there's no Maisa Shani left in this barrel. So whatever you could fix up, you should fix up. Tasis has another shot in the word Mechel, but that's how Rashi lives. And then, Go ahead and drink the entire Shabbos. Drink till you get your pots of pan. In other words, he's saying, and what say you Shabbos? You take two loy, and you'll say, ah, yes, Breda, that all along this was the truma. So everything else that I drank did not have truma mixed into it. It turned out to be after Shabbos. We verified that whatever I drank during Shabbos or while I didn't have any came, whatever I drank was not truma mice. However, Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Yesi and Rabbi Shimon, they say you cannot drink it during Shabbos. And the way we understand Shabbat right now is why not? Because you have Truman mixed into this barrel. He doesn't believe that what you do later is yet greater retrospect. So what do we see clearly from here? You know, hold, there's no break. And what are we talking about a case here? This is a trailer with us. This is up to you. It's your decision to decide and you didn't. It doesn't matter if the circumstances don't allow you to. It doesn't matter, but it's up to you. And therefore we say aim ready. Yet. Um, we'll find elsewhere when it comes to Taylor Das Achei, there is Breda. Would we see that? But now we learned in the Mishnah, what happens if a person, let's say, is ill and he doesn't want his wife to become a Yavama? So he says, This is you get from today if I die from this sickness. And um, and uh, when if he dies from the sickness, she is divorced. So the question is. What about, let's say it took 12 months. During those 12 months, is she considered married to him? He's a koi. Can she eat koi? Uh, what's the story? Uh, so we say, mahi yamim. What's the story with those days? Not actually, the mother the Rebbe just says, had a yike During that time, she's a married woman. Only after he dies from this place, then it's like ma'asha, then it's retrospective. But till then, she's a married woman. Now we know that you can't have a get after he dies. So it has to be, you can't say, oh, the moment he died, that's when the get was enacted, activated, because it wouldn't work, because ain't get lacha misses we had before. So it must be retrospective. So it actually is retrospective from the moment he gave it, and the connotations are retrospective one minute before he died. But bottom line is, we say yes, Breda. The same with Abi Yehuda, who said before, ain't Breda by the case of wine, he said yes, Breda by Gitte. What's the difference? Because by Gittin, it's totally but Nasa Cherem. It's up to whether he dies in six or not. It's in Abish's hands. <clears throat> it's in Abish's hands whether he will live or he won't live. And because it's in Abish's hands whether he live or he won't live, therefore it's totally but Nasa Cherem. We say Breda. We see right here the distinction between the Asta Sasma and Nasa Cherem. Another ayah, another halacha, another source, another Tana to show you there is a difference that Rabbi is right and Rabbi is right. Let's talk about Abshimim. The third of it has absolutely no bread. When it comes to itself, no bread, because he says the case of wine. Abshimim is a Yehuda that we do not rely on after Shabbos to take out the wine, and during Shabbos, you cannot drink. Yet, the toilet, the das, the chedim, is the better one. And yet, the Abshimim, the same Abshimim holds him. Toilet, the chedim, is bread. Where do you see that? Toilet, the das, the chedim, is the better one. We just said. Toilet, the das, the chedim, is the better one. We just said that. Time to learn. Hareini, a guy says to a woman, Hareini, boy, look, look, we'll have beer and intimacy together. Al menas, and I'm doing this for the sake of getting married, but there's a condition tagged to it. Al menas, she condition your father will agree. So this is a toile, the das achedim. Afa pisha, because up to the father. Afa pisha, lay, that's am gonna say, Tanakama said she's owed you Kurdish wine, because nobody would like to have beer in a fruit bus. So it's as if he originally thought that regardless, I'm gonna be, get, get married to her. And he uh, <clears throat> just said it, but he started with tonight. Abshimen, then Yehuda, I'm the Mishra Abshimen. Rotsa, then the father says yes, the Kadashis. But Loy Rotsa, ain't Kadashis. He says no, it's not Kadashis. So here's a toilet of Das Achedim, toilet of Das Achedim, and yet we see Yesh Breder, because the father says yes, and they're married. <clears throat> so clearly there's a distinction between two. It's a very important Rashi here. Rashi wants to understand what is the difference between Berera and Tanai. Every time you have a condition, you do something, you make a condition, and, and if it happens, then retro retrospective. Isn't that what Berera is? What's the difference? So Rashi lays down a, a, a very important rule. Chase disagrees slightly, but Rashi gives a very important rule. He said this, whenever you make a Tanai, the Tanai, whatever the Tanai is, is totally in your control. You know, the tithe, this will be valid if you give me $200. This will be valid if you travel over here. Something which is in your control. Number one, tithe is in your control. Number two, when you make it tonight, you want it to happen. Why are you saying this now? I'm giving you this on the condition you give me $100. You want me to give that, I want you to give me that $100, and this will happen. So every tonight is in my control. I want it to happen. And then, therefore, when it happens, it's still in my friend because I always wanted it to happen. 
So therefore, because I always wanted it to happen, and it was in my control, I could have done it straight away. It was in my control, and therefore we say, you know what? It's retrospective, and it's McQueen from that moment. Therefore, tonight, that kind of a tonight has nothing to do with Breda. But over here, where you have no control, you're saying it's a, 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 that someone else has to do something, and that's where Breda comes in. That where I have no control, and, and I really don't know what the outcome is going to be. I really don't know whether the father will agree or won't agree. So it's, it's, right now, I talk, I don't know. It's a suffix, I don't know. It's just in the case of the women coming, whichever comes first through my door. I really don't know who it's going to be. So where, where I really don't know right now, and to say it tonight that it should take place from right now, how can it if right now I don't know? And it's not in my control. And it actually adds one more point, and it happens usually by itself. And but the first part actually doesn't add that extra point that happens by itself. You need Breda. So even if you call it a Tanai, such a kind of a Tanai needs Breda to kick in to make it retrospective. Because since right now, I don't know, without Breda to say that you, you, something you do later should maybe be retrospective on what basis? It's only if I knew already right now, I wanted it to happen. You can say, okay, so that's what Tanai does. It cements it that this is what I wanted to happen actually happen. But over here, I, every Breda is a case where you don't know the outcome. Because you don't know the outcome, so therefore to say that that happens later, therefore it must be that now that's what I wanted. That we don't, without the laws of Brady, we wouldn't know that. <clears throat> so therefore, the Gemara asks, so here, Mishashi says to Rav, Abai is right, there's a different term, that's Atatot Achayim. And Rav is going to say, no, I believe there's no difference between the two. So, so how is Rav going to explain the case of the wine? How can Abihuda and Abshimit both say you cannot rely on the wine in the barrel to drink it over Shabbos or drink it when there were no pots around? If you um, uh, if they hold of the rule of yes breda, then they should be able to drink the wine. So I don't say you know why? But different reasons altogether are unrelated to breda. They're worried, come with say Shabbos, there won't be any more wine left. What if the barrel smashes over Shabbos and there's no wine left? Gone. Because you need to do another activity with say Shabbos and you don't know for sure it's gonna happen. It's not that something like the Mela is going to happen. You don't know if it's going to happen. In that case, so they say, maybe the barrel will break. You cannot rely. That's, you have nothing with Breda. It's, it's, there's a shash all the time that you'll never be able to sort out the Truman and the That's why you shouldn't rely on it. On Shabbos. Amalek. Rabbi says back, There's always Breda. The awesome kid of time. In the case of wine, is different. Then they say to Maybe the barrel will break. The name says there, Shoysa Tivum Afreya comes out that you drank Tevo retrospectively. Amalek says, I'm not worried. Shibaka, because this is hardly ever happens. If it happens, it happens. Worry about them. But right now, we're not worried. <clears throat> Taste already here. Explain the long taste in here and there and other places. Sukkah. There are different degrees of bread. It's difficult somebody holds just bread in one place. You cannot automatically surmise you hold bread in another place. In the case of the Achim Shachok, the Kuch Zayin is a certain kind of bread. There are many different kinds of bread. We have here in the Pizai, many different kinds of bread. And you cannot automatically extrapolate and say, if you hold bread here, you hold it everywhere else. And you have to work through the, all the nuances. That's why bread is considered one of the very difficult subjects. And just because there's so many fine differences between one case and the other case, you got to explore them through to its logical end. Okay. Everyone we well, we well and Ochamol, my father, Dob Nachman Yachevich Shifra should have a full Shlema, the cut of Mavish. Goodbye.